Weapons with the ability to carry out such deadly force do not belong on our streets, Mr. Speaker. There is no justification for the, the use of these weapons anywhere but on the battlefield for which they were designed. I firmly support banning assault weapons of all types. A ban on assault weapons and high-capacity magazines has been endorsed by several organizations, including Mayors Against Illegal Drug Guns, the International Association of Chiefs of Police, Major Cities Chiefs Association, the National Association of Women Law Enforcement Executives, the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, the Police Executive Research Forum, the Police Foundation, and International Association of Campus Law Enforcement Administrators. The culture of violence doesn't necessarily start with guns. It can often be traced back to mental health concerns and bullying. According to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration's 2009 National Survey on Drug Use and Health, there was an estimated 45.1 million U.S. adults living with a mental illness. That is 20% of all American adults. Sadly, only 17 million of these adults receive services to address their illness. A significant number of the country's inmates also have mental health problems. According to the Department of Justice's 2004 survey of inmates in state and federal correctional facilities and its 2002 survey of inmates in local jails, nearly 45 percent of all inmates in federal prison have a mental health problem. Over 55% of the inmates in state prison have a mental health problem, and nearly 65% of inmates in local jails have a mental health problem. We cannot continue to ignore the fact that we need to do more to address the issue of mental health. Turning our back on this problem will not make it go away. The, use, the issue of bullying has become rampant in our society. Too many of our children are being bullied during and after school and on the Internet. According to Stomp Out Bullying, it is estimated that one out of four teens is bullied during their lifetimes. Fifty-eight percent of kids admit someone has said mean or hurtful things to them online. More than 40 percent say it has happened to them more than once. 53% of kids admit, admit having said something mean or hurtful to another person online, and more than one in three has done it more than once. 58% have not told their parents or an adult about something mean or hurtful that happened to them online. Many believe that bullying is a rite of passage. I'm here to tell you that it is not. Bullying is intentional. It is cruel and abusive. It can set the tone for a lifetime of hurt. Many people are never the same after being bullied. Depression, anxiety, and many other psychological problems can result from bullying. Some turn to substance abuse, even suicide. Bullying is no joking matter. It is not something to be taken lightly. We must inform our children of the consequences of bullying. We must be attentive and listen to their cries for help. How many of our children need to fall victim to this cruel behavior before we are moved to act? We must address this issue now. And Mr. Speaker, as I close, it is very clear, very, very clear that we live in a culture of violence. The culture of violence has ravaged our communities, taking the lives of innocent Americans, ripping apart American families, and destroying families along the way. We must act now because our nation is depending on us. Anyone who believes that it is okay to use a gun in an open theater is not really thinking very rationally. Someone who believes that you can put a police officer at every single entrance into a school is really not thinking very rationally. We have to do something. No matter what our personal beliefs are, we are all here to work for the American public, not ourselves. We may have a personal opinion as to what should be done about guns, but the people of America are speaking and we need to listen to them. I yield back, Mr. Speaker.